This is Pastor Mike Brunner of Bible Christian Center in Slipper Rock. First of all, I'd like to extend an invitation to you if you're in the Slipper Rock area to come to our service Sunday 1030 at the Slipper Rock Park Building. And also, as you're ready to enter in and, and listen to the Word of God regarding this service, I want to share with something with you I believe will be of great help to you. Everything we do at Abba Christian Center is in the context of intimacy with Jesus Christ. God wants you to know this. He died not just so you could have eternal life, but that His life will become your life. What do I mean by that? 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says, He's called you to partake of His glory and virtue of His divine nature. It means that the very faith of God, He, he wants it to be in you. Romans 12, 3, Galatians 2, 20, the very love of God uh, that caused Him to die for you. He wants that same love to be in you. Romans 5, 5. He wants the very life intrinsic to his own being because you're his literal child. He wants his life glory to God to become your life. He wants his faith to be your faith. His love to be your life. His wisdom be your wisdom. His compassion to be your compassion. You say that's almost too good to be true. I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ is too good to be true for your mind. That's why he's given you a heart to believe, I trust that with your heart you'll enter into the message today knowing that he died that his life might become your life. Glory to God. Well this says when you get in the word of God, he's causing the word to affect you in the context of superhuman power. Amen. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. hallelujah. Man. So we're going to look into this because the Word of God is for us, but it's going to really be dependent on your response because God really moves in our lives according to our faith and expectation. And the devil will do everything he can to minimize this Word, to negate this Word, amen? But God wants us to run to the Word as we've never run before. Glory to Jesus, amen. All right, so let's, let's look at some things in this context. You know, the word itself, amen, is not about Jesus. It is Jesus. Amen? amen. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Amen? And the word became flesh. Hallelujah. This word is Jesus. Glory to God. Now, that sounds simple. But, man, when we enter into the reality of it, you know, the Bible says in John 6.63, that his word is spirit. Well, in John 4, 23 and 24, God says, I am spirit. You can't separate the word of God from God because it is God. Amen? Amen. And see, I was at a church years ago, and uh, the pastor was wonderful, but the dominant, I'll be honest with you, was very liberal. And uh, he said, where we got it wrong, he said, our denomination said, instead of saying the word of God is the word of God, we say the word of God contains the word of God. And then we decide to what, the, what is, you know, the word and what isn't. And I said, wow. You know, but the bottom line is this. Man, the word is Jesus. If Jesus came to you, then he wouldn't tell you anything different than is in the word. To be honest with you. Glory to God. So, you know, we shared a simple example, but I mean, if you're dating somebody and you're engaged to somebody, say that, you know, and say they're in Iowa and you're here, and, uh, you know, and she sends you a letter, and, uh, and you open it up, and your name's Tom, and it says, Dear John, you're in trouble. Amen? <laughs> Isn't that the truth? You know what I'm saying? But you know what? If she sends you a letter like that, she's communicating what's in her heart. Amen? And that would be much better, amen, if you got a letter, dear Tom, saying, you know, I can't wait to see you next week, amen? But words depict who you are, amen? Words are containers of what's in your heart that depict who you are, amen? Glory to Jesus. Mm. The word is so powerful. Glory to God. Um, we know that in Romans 10, 17, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know that in Hebrews 11, 1, the Bible says faith is the substance of things unseen, the evidence of things hoped for. But I, I just want you to, to see and the, as never before that the word is Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. 
Go with me to 2 Peter 1, if you would. Glory to Jesus. And uh, we're going to hit some things. I, I, honestly, man, I was just meditating on this before I went to bed, came up dreaming about this. 2 Peter chapter 1. Oh, man, there's so much in here. But let's start with, uh, oh, glory, verse 16. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Apostle Peter is saying this, and, and I love what the, the way that 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1 starts out. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To those that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I, I love what the, I'll tell you, if someone's a true minister of the gospel, they will be a servant first. Amen. And whatever God has gifted them with, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, whatever, that will always come second. Amen? Amen? And then they will convey, praise God, that they don't have any faith that's stronger than you or love, that we're all in this together. All right. And so in 2 Peter 1.16 it says, We have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the most excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him on the holy mount. So Peter is recounting the experience he had on the Mount of Transfiguration. Man, I mean, how would you like to have been there? Wow. I mean, so Jesus takes Peter, James, and John. Amen takes them up to a high mountain, and he is transfigured before them. I mean, his face becomes like the sun, S-U-N. I, I mean, the glory of God literally who transfigures him while he is praying. And you, you see the accounts in Matthew 17, Mark 9, and Luke 9. But it says, as he prayed, as he communed with the Father, I mean the glory within the Father's heart. who just manifested, amen, to him in that way. Just like, you know, you, you, you give a hug to your children, your grandchildren. Or, I, I mean, you, you just, glory to God. Amen. So he's saying, you know what? Man, I, I heard his voice. I literally heard his voice audibly. I heard the voice of God audibly. Man, I, I saw him transfigured. And then I went under the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, the, this scripture, the Bible says, they fell asleep as dead men because the anointing was so strong, they physically, their bodies could not handle it. They were overwhelmed with the glory of God. And then they woke up, you know, and they saw Elijah and, and Moses with Jesus talking. Amen. So, you know, how would you like to have an experience like that? I mean, what would you pay for that? Glory to God. Obviously, you can't pay for it. But man, I, I mean, Jesus takes you up to a high mountain and he's transfigured before you. Wow. And you hear the audible voice of the Father and you see how the Father and the Son, amen, interact with one another. And just prior to that experience, Jesus is saying, I'm giving you a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven is like. So you can enter into interacting with the Father in intimacy. Wow. So, but then he does not conclude with that. He says this. We also have a more sure word of prophecy. Whoo. Where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the morning star arise in your heart. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of the Scripture mm, is of any private interpretation. For this prophecy came not of old time but the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. What he's saying is this. What I saw and heard was amazing. But there's something even better than what I experienced. Well, what could be better than that? He's saying when you enter into the written word of God, the Bible says that the entrance of his word giveth light. Mm -hmm. Woo! 
And we said this word is him. So when you have light given to you through the word of God, you see Jesus in a way that's even greater than having a vision because Jesus told Thomas, man, it's better to believe by faith than me to appear to you and have you put your finger in my nail-scarred hands. Why is it better? Because you're not always going to have a vision of Jesus, but you will always have the Word of God in you so you can see Jesus. Amen? Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I've shared with you many times about, you know, you know, experience I had my second daughter Mary had a growth on the side of her face, very serious. It, it, was, it was removed with an operation. And then the doctor was crying when he told me, he said it started to grow back. And it was very, very serious. And long story short, by the mercy of God, the grace of God, as Kathy and I prayed and fasted three days on the third day. I was up by the water tower, not too far from here. And I just walk in and praying and just crying out to God and a fire came in my right hand. I mean, literal fire came in my right hand about the size of a 50-cent piece. I can remember it like yesterday. And uh, the Lord said, go lay your hands on her, and the fire will go into her and will destroy the growth. He said, don't talk to anybody on the way. So I came and just very simply laid hands on her, and the growth disappeared. And I took our renter right up to the doctor, Dr. Hoyt Sr. in Grove City, and he said, it's all gone, praise God. And uh, But the next time... Something's wrong with one of my kids. You know what I did? I went right up to that same cornfield, <laughs> right where I walked, put my hand out just like I did before, and I walked, and I walked, and I walked, and there was no fire. And the Lord says, I've got something better than fire in your hand. I said, wow. You know, because I was a younger Christian back then. I said, I'm thinking a torch. You know? <laughs> I was thinking, I don't know. I don't, I, you know what I'm saying? And the Lord says, it's inward it's the fire of inward faith through my word. I said, I didn't really understand that fully. But the bottom line is this. The gifts of the Spirit are amazing and they're necessary. We're going we're gonna to teach on the gifts of the Spirit where I believe every person here will walk in the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Not that you're not walking now, but it's going to be stronger. Yes. Every one of us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, uh, but the word of God is fire. In Jeremiah 23, the Bible says, thy word is fire. So when this word gets in your spirit, glory to God, it is an abiding knowingness. See, that fire that caused my, my daughter to be healed, it left after I laid hands on her. It was gone. But the fire of the word that causes you to see him and what you see you will be, that causes you to know him, it's abiding. It's there all the time. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. So when we enter into the word like this, it causes us to know him. It causes us to see him. It causes us to understand his heart. Woo, and glory to God because of that. It causes us to experience him. Amen? A lot of people want to experience God, and that's awesome. But we have to experience God His way. It's first through the Word, then through worship. Glory to God. So I'm going to say that again. The Word will cause you to know Him. The Word will cause you to see Him. And then the Word will cause you to experience Him. And I tell you, it's, it's, that's the way God does things. Amen? Amen? Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. Because the Bible says... What you see, you'll be. When Elisha wanted to experience the, the double portion of Elijah's spirit, he said, if you see me, when I leave, you'll have it. Amen? You've got to see it first. I'm going to say, you've got to see him first. You've got to know him first. Then you know him, you see him, then you experience him. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. Now that's simple, but it's so powerful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we enter in the, the knowing who Christ is, seeing who Christ is, and then experiencing Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And then we enter in to seeing the Christ that we know and see is in you 
So his life that he died to give you now manifest in you and through you and for you through the power of the Holy Spirit. If any one of us ever got a hold of that, we'd never again be the same. Now we say it a lot because it, it needs to be said, glory to God. So we enter into this, glory to Jesus. And I tell you, it's so strong. All right. Now, you know, we try to make it real simple, you know, four Ps. One of the first thing that, you know, if you're going to enter into getting the word in you, it's, it's presentation. The word's a present. Amen? It's a present. It's a gift. So we need to enter into letting, the Holy, letting God present it to us. You know, there, there, there are millions of believers that don't have a Bible. Millions. When Kathy was in China, there's a guy we got to know, and, but uh, he was, he, he'd share the word. I mean, he would share the word hit for eight hours straight, take a break, and share it for, like me, I'm talking a half hour, and share it for eight more hours. And the people were so hungry, then finally he found out the reason they would listen to him for 16 hours in a row, nobody had a Bible. For real. This same guy is, is something that, that the Chinese authorities at that time they were trying to kill him. And uh, they, uh, anyways, they, they got him out. They actually put him in a coffin and said that somebody had died. He was alive in the coffin and they, he escaped, you know, the, to the underground church. But you know, we need to be thankful that we have the Word of God. Amen? Amen? We really do. So it's a present. So we need to enter in to letting God present the present to us. Amen? We just need to get it out. Amen? Glory to God. That's a simple step. Amen. Second, we put down po presentation, ponderance. And I've heard different ministers share this. You know, four Ps, and I think it's very strong, very simply. It gets to us. It's meditation, ponderance. You just don't read the Word, although reading the Word will bless you. But we need to think upon the Word. Amen. Amen. Ponder it. Meditate on it. Over and over and over and over again. Glory to God. Until understanding comes. Glory to Jesus. Man, when you get a revelation, there's nothing like it in the world. Glory to God. I mean, you know, Pastor Scott, Transformation Church, we just helped him disciple him years ago when he was a young Christian. And I never forget, I could call him, it was like 3 in the morning. He called me up. I always have my phone on in case something's up. And he called me up, and I said, man, what's wrong? What's wrong? He said, nothing's wrong. He just started screaming and crying. I said, slow down. He said, God showed me this in the Word. And I said, that's awesome, Pastor Scott. About you know what would be better? If God showed you that when you get something in the Word, you call me at 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He said, it's changed my life. I said, glory to God. I said, and now I'm going back to bed. <laughs> Amen. And we'll talk later. But he was, you know, when you get a revelation, you got to tell somebody. Amen. Glory to God. For real. I mean, but then you go to protection. You need to protect the word. Because the devil, according to Mark 4, what he does is for the purpose of getting this word out of your heart. Yeah. Well, it's not working. Things have gotten worse. Now, they can't be that good. Now, that can't be true. That's fanaticism. Amen? He'll do everything he can to take the word out of your heart. That's why it says persecution comes. That's why it says affliction comes. Well, if God's so good, then how come this happened? If God's so good, then how come you're still, uh, you know, believing him for finances? You know, amen. He'll do anything and everything he can to get the word out of you. Because he's afraid of it. Because it will destroy him. Amen. So we need to protect. We need to protect the word. Amen. So presentation, ponderance, protection, and then proclamation. You need to proclaim the word, first of all, to your own soul. You need to tell your soul. How many know your emotions can get weird? I'm serious. Sometimes you have too much pepperoni on your pizza, and I don't know what the deal is. Seriously. I mean, your, your, your emotions can, I mean, wow. You know, and it's like you've got to proclaim to your own soul. This is the way it is. 
I might not feel like God's working for me. It may not look like God's working for me, but God is working for me. His word is working effectually on my behalf because God said it is. Amen? Glory to God. You can't have hesitation. The, the devil's so much like a dog, really. I mean, if there's a dog that is, is, is really a, a, maybe a pit bull or whatever, and you show hesitation and fear, that dog will growl. I mean, but if you show, you know, you're at peace, the dog will be at peace. But here's the thing, if you're at peace, the devil will run from you in terror. But he's a lot like a dog. You can't hesitate. Amen? You can't have a, be double-minded. So we need to proclaim. I'll never forget, we're in campus ministry and I was sharing at one of the New Life meetings about God being Abba Father. And one of the, one of the kids who, I mean, he just got it. He's in ministry today. And uh, I mean, he got so excited about it. I mean, really excited. And he was, he's a tough kid. He's a linebacker in a football team. I mean, tough kid. And uh, his roommate, this is a true story, his roommate at the time was the pirate parrot. Really, that was his roommate. You know, how would you like to have the pirate parrot as your roommate? You know, so he'd, you know, sometimes he'd dress up just for fun as the pirate parrot in, in the residence hall. Or he'd drive to Pittsburgh from Slip Rock in the pirate parrot. How'd you like to say, oh my God, is that the parrot in the car? My, you know what I'm saying? But this kid was not saved. And, and so uh, this young man said, you got to get saved. He said, man, I don't want to get saved. He said, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not into this. He, and, and he said, you've got to get saved because God is your Abba. And the kid says, what are you talking about, man? And he kept saying, you've got to get saved. Don't be so stupid. God is your father. He wants relationship with you. I mean, this went on for like a two hours. Finally, the kid says, I guess I need to get saved. And he did. The pirate parrot got saved. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because somebody proclaimed the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Acts, Paul proclaimed and persuaded through the word of God. Amen? Glory to God. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Now, see, this gets exciting. I'm going to give you just some simple examples where people took the word of God and because they systematically just got the word every day, through the Spirit of God, how many know you can't give yourself a revelation? Right. Amen? Right. You cannot give yourself a revelation. Only the Holy Spirit can give you a revelation. He's the Spirit of revelation. That's why you go to the Word, you, you humble yourself and say, my goodness, only by the grace of God, the mercy of God, the blood of Jesus, will revelation come to me through the Word. Amen? But then you get excited about the revelation. But as you continue to enter into the Word of God, Revelation, revelation can come like with the, the pastor, a light bulb comes on, but sometimes, and many times, most of the times, it comes progressively. Amen? Progressively. Amen. Metamorpho. Amen. It comes progressively. You get in the Word and you say, wow, that's neat. And you get in the Word the next day. Wow, that's neat. And over a period of time, the Word becomes, wow, it, it becomes real to you. Glory to Jesus. That's why it says in 2 Peter, the verse we read, 1, 16 to, to 23, it's it, until the day dawns. Amen? And Proverbs 4, I love the verse that says, the sun will get brighter and brighter until the noonday sun comes, which is the brightest. Amen? So the word is bright, but then it gets progressively. Amen? Hallelujah. We just finished a serious uh, how to be the real you. We, we, we got a lot now. And it's like, but it's progressive. Amen? In Revelation. All right, let's go over some, I'm just going to give you some testimonies. We'll see how far uh, we get. I'll never forget, uh, uh, he's retired now, but he was one of the main professors at SRU in the history department, Dr. James Minnell. And I asked him if I could share this. He said, fine. Uh, man, I'll be honest with you, he was not saved, and he just laughed at people that said the Bible's the word of God. He was a history uh, professor. And he just thought it was any like any other history book. And uh, Jesus saved him. Glory to God. And he became one of the major proponents at the university as the Bible being the Word of God. I mean, he stood up for the Word of God. Laid his laughter at the Word of God. But I remember we went to a meeting and he, we were driving to the meeting in Grove City. And he just said, you know what? I can't believe how I minimized and degraded the Word of God. 
as another book. He said, now I've come to see as the word of God has gotten in me, it's the word of the living God. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. God will take you, amen, to a place of such confidence in the word of God mm -hmm. that you will stand up, amen, to anyone, anywhere, at any time. Mm -hmm. Glory to Jesus. Woo, and God will back you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, when the devil came, it is written. It is written. It is written. Amen. Glory to God. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. If you want to grow in being a soul winner, I mean, seminars are great. I believe in seminars. We're going to have, I think, in November, Terry Smith come down. We're going to do a spiritual warfare seminar in the uh, middle, I think, week before uh, Thanksgiving. And that's awesome. I, I believe in seminars. I like going to seminars. I, I, I love learning from other people. Amen? If you think you, you got the corner on the market and you can't learn from others, you're deceived. Yeah. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And, uh, but the, if you want to be a soul winner, if you want to be a soul winner, get in the Word. That's right. And ask God to show you through the Word the reality of heaven and hell. To show you the truth of the gospel as being the only provision to heaven. Him being one way, you say, well, that's so simple. But how many people do it? I don't think many people do. We had, we had a young man, we were discipling. His name's Tim Wright. And he's now this very successful missionary. He was in the country of Turkey for many years. One year he, he, he came home and he said, you know what? I got a wife and two kids. He said, I spent 180 days in jail. He said, actually, I'm going to place, he said, some sections of Turkey are like the Old West. You don't even want to go there. Some aren't that bad. They have McDonald's, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like in Istanbul. But he said, the authorities had to arrest me. He said, uh, so I'd be in jail every other day to arrest me and let me out type of deal. And, uh, but when he first, you know, he got saved under our ministry. And he just began to grow in revelation to the word of the truth of the gospel. But yeah, I'm going to get across to you. It's progressive. He's the guy. I've shared his testimony. So he went out with me, and then I sent him out with another college student. I said, you know, you learn from him. And then I said, you share the gospel with him. You take the lead. So the first time he had to take the lead, he was, went to a residence dorm. It was a, a, a private residence dorm, not owned by the university. So he knocks on the door. His kids comes to the door, and we taught them to say, we're from New Life, a group on campus. We're sharing with people about Jesus. We hope you have a few minutes to listen. All right? So he froze just like this. And he, he is flashing red hair. And he says, hi, we're from Christ. <laughs> and, he like and, and he came back. The kid he went with was named Jimmy. I said, how'd it go? He said, don't ask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he's become a great soul winner. Now, I'm a great soul winner. Through the word of God. And through learning to proclaim it. He said he's won more souls. He said in Istanbul, in, in, in Turkey. God would appear the people over and over again in dreams to Muslims that Jesus was the Messiah, that Jesus was Savior. He said that he had flashed flaming red hair. Obviously, he's, he, he's, he's American, white with red hair. And he said, oh, I do. He said, I don't even have, he said, people will come up to, I mean, every day, every day. He said, I'd have New Testaments in my pocket, you know, in their language. And, and then someone would come up, you know, trying to be discreet and say, I had a vision about Jesus, and I saw a man with red hair with a Bible telling me about Jesus. Are you the man? And he'd say, it's like I, I got red hair. You know, here's the Bible. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, and I shared with you about Jordan, this young man, just he's 18, turned 19. Very shy. I mean, just a great kid. He's at uh, Bible school in Tampa, Florida now. Howard Rodney Brown School. And, uh, you know, this past year, he, he won a 1,000 people to Jesus. I mean, for real. I mean, they stick, the commitment stick. And this kid's the shyest kid. And uh, he got in the Word. Glory to God. Jesus began to minister to him that he could win souls through the Word of God. This kid's amazing. He's in school right now. I'm going to bring him up and have him share. But amen. amen. All right. So how do we enter in to what our heart's desires are? 
enter into your time what you need, amen, what you desire, and find scriptures that cover your case. Amen? Now, I know that sounds so simple, but most people don't do it. Amen? I mean, if, you need, if you've been hurt, and tell me to anybody that hasn't, and you've been hurt, I mean, by others. You've been, man, maybe you've been discarded, degraded. I, I mean, you, you're hurting. Abused, uh, you experienced abuse. I mean, I'll tell you, the provision is the love of God. Amen? The provision is the love of God. Jesus is not the author of hurt. Amen. He's not the author of harm. Satan's come to kill, rob, and destroy. Well, how do you enter into wholeness? Scripture's on the love of God. Amen? From John three sixteen to Isaiah 48, where it says that Jesus has nail-scarred hands, and in each one of his hands is a picture of you. John 17, 26, where Jesus said, I have declared thy name, Father, and I will declare it so that the love that I experienced by you, they will experience just like I did. So that your love could be in them and I could be one with them. Wow. There are so many people, that, I'll be honest with you, they meditate on the wrong things. They, and they spend years uh, you know, meditating on the little toe of the left foot of the beast. I'm all for understanding Revelation too, the best you can. I listen to Perry Stone and a bunch of good teachers. But come on, man. I, I don't want to have a picture of the left toe of the, of the little, uh, you know, the little toe of the left foot of the beast. I want to see Jesus. Amen? Amen. I want to see Jesus. Man, the love of God. I shared with you a girl that, you know, we were teaching on just on the goodness of God. And she was on heroin real bad. Had been gang raped several times. And uh, in her church, her, her church taught her that this was the will of God for her so she could be more empathetic with others. And I told her, I said, Kathy, and I ministered to her, and I said, man, man, if I believed that, I'd be on heroin too. Seriously, I would. My God. But we began to share with her the love of God. We'd give her scriptures on the love of God every week. Let's get together once a week. Man, she started to enter in to come into meetings and she'd worship three, four hours with us on Friday nights. She began to get excited about Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. I, I can't tell you where she's at today, but she is, and I could tell you, but I can't because she's, she's a missionary in different parts of the earth where no one goes to. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to Jesus! Well, who did that? It wasn't me or Kathy that did that. We get that it was the Word that did that. Amen? It was the Word that did that. The Word, seeing Jesus, washed her of the pain of the lies and the destruction and replaced it, glory to God, with peace Woo, and strength. Glory to God. It was the Word that did it. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Holy Ghost. Man, it was the Word. It was the Word. How many of us know the fullness of the love of God? None of us. But I tell you, to the degree that we know it is to the degree that we're free. Glory to God is to the degree that you will have faith. What brings faith in God? It's knowing the love of God and seeing the love of God. Amen? I've never read anywhere in the Bible where Jesus came into a time when he would left, half the people were sick and they had to build a new hospital. But that's what we teach. I'm talking to church as a whole. Well, Jesus, you know, he just, you know, he does this so he can be conformed to his image. I'm here to tell you something. It's a lie. You want to overcome. Well, glory to God. Read Romans 8. Amen? Amen? It's an overcoming. Whoo, man, it is so good. I read it every day. Glory to God. It's amazing. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead empowers you, loves you, causes the very life of Jesus to manifest to you, through you, and for you. Wow. And again, I don't say this in any way to degrade, demean. 
But not, I'll be honest, the vast majority of Christians meditate on Romans 7 much, 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 much more than Romans 8. We are a, a young man, uh, his name's Caleb Simon. This girl, he's a lawyer now in Tulsa. And he's a leader on campus in an university group. And uh, I said, Caleb, why don't we just go up and we'll go to guys' dorms and, and we'll just try to get their attention and try to do whatever. And so we came up with a little survey. You know, do you love Jesus? Of course, most people in Grove City College said yes. But we said, to what degree are you experiencing victory over sin in your life? 90% of the kids, I mean 90%, said, you know what, not much. Not to the degree we know we should. And every one of them quoted Romans 7. The things I want to do, I can't do. And the things I don't want to do, I end up doing. I mean, every one of them. We went to 50 kids. And Caleb's a real tough kid. I mean, he's a really tough kid. And uh, <laughs> I said, calm down. And because he said, he, he, you know, he's a lawyer now. He's progressed in his ability to, you know what I'm saying, not to offend I think the one kid, he said, how stupid are you? I said, Caleb, no, no, no. He's not stupid. He just needs enlightened. Amen? He said, and hey, we just tell him, you know, how many of you have read Romans 8? Not really. Not really. They got so frustrated reading Romans 7, I think they stopped. But that's all they heard taught and preached in their church. That's what they heard taught and preached. So now they had a rationale for their inability. Well, that's not going to cause you to overcome. It will cause you to sin more. Because now you have an excuse for it. You give the flesh an inch, to give the devil an inch, you'll take them out. So we just said, you know, guys, why won't you read Romans 8? Keep us starting the Bible study. Glory to God. Romans 8. These kids started to change and get delivered and changed. And a lot of them, I mean, were just top-notch kids. I mean, majoring in ministry. Glory to God. It was that simple. Changing from a Romans 7 meditation to a Romans 8 meditation. Some of these kids just start getting on fire for God. For real. We did a retreat. I think it was about 50 guys in, in Canada, 50 girls. And, and uh, these kids just got on fire for God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. What you meditate on is what you will become. Amen. Glory to Jesus. We had, uh, just recently, you know, we had at the last healing service, a man that... Uh, David Schmoltz, uh, down to 95 pounds and dying, stomach taken out, no port. He, he, you know, there was no, in the natural, I believe in doctors. Thank God for doctors. But there's no hope. Now he's up to 150 pounds. Glory to God. And he's doing well. well I just talked to him, man. I just, he's doing well. And but obviously, God did something. You know, we're believing for a creative miracle, believing for the miraculous, right? Well, you saw just last Sunday a, a man that was here. Antonio owns a large restaurant in Pittsburgh. My gosh, and he had need of a kidney. And, and I called him up, and he just, the Holy Ghost came on him. And I said, there's a creative miracle taking place in your body. Glory to Jesus. I was at a church in, uh, a while ago, and a lady didn't have any ovaries and wanted a child. And she said, during, and we were just teaching on the creative anointing. She said, Jesus came, and I, I, I felt God, a creative anointing. Amen. Well, someone says, I want to see miracles, creative miracles. I, I want to see this. I, I want to see this. Well, it's not going to be about you. What are you going to do to bring that about? Seriously, what are you going to do? We say, so you're going to heal an ass not eyelash if your life depended on it. But I'll tell you what can happen is the word in you woo, can cause you to see the creator. Amen. And the manifestor doing what he did through Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And see, I, I, I meditate on Luke twenty two fifty one every day. Every day. You know, where uh, a guy's coming to apprehend Jesus, take him to trial to kill him. And, 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 the, and the one uh, amplified version, New American Standard said, Peter sliced off half his head and the guy was dying in his own blood. Some translations say he just chopped off his ear. But you know Peter, I mean, he wasn't going to you know, chop off his ear lobe, you know what I'm saying? But he had a sword, not a pocket knife. You know what I'm saying? We read things and don't read it. He had a sword. 
My God, I had a friend, a uh, good guy, he uh, teaches at Butler Community College. I said, can you make me a sword? And then I had it over my, you know, down in my den. And he said, yeah, and it, it, I mean, it's sharp, you know, and stuff. He said, Pastor Mike, he said, here's the deal. You put it on your wall, but knowing you, don't take it down. <laughs> don't take it. I said, all right. You know, that's what he said to me. I said, okay. So Peter has a sword. I mean, the guy's dying. His, you know, his ears on the ground, half his head's gone. And Jesus, I mean, almost nonchalantly, very simply, this is Jesus. I, I could think he's saying, you know what? Nobody's going to get their ear chopped off and die on my watch. The Bible says he just touched him. And his head came back, and his ear came back, and one of the greatest creative miracles that the Bible records took place to a guy who was the enemy of Jesus, who was coming to kill him. And I'm going to tell you on every day, there are some, I mean, God will heal the unbeliever. Amen. He will heal the unbeliever. You want to get faith for he, unbelievers getting healed? Well, then go to the Word. Naaman. My God, the widow woman. Uh, you know, and second, I, I mean, the mercy of God. Read Psalm 136. I, I was with somebody, and I said, they, they were saying how unworthy they were, and I said, welcome to the club. I said, let's go to Psalm 136. 26 verses. 26 times in a row, God says, and his mercy will bring victory for you. And I just read the psalm. 26 times in a row, 26 verses. And by the end of reading it, it was the word. She said, you know what? Maybe I am worthy through his mercy. I said, you know what? Maybe you are. <laughs> Amen. See, let the word work for, for you instead of you trying to bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's word will do a much better job than you and I. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Really, I just sense, I said, there's a spirit in the healing service of creative anointing only because the word produces it. Glory to Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. Let's just go over a few more. And I'll tell you, when I look at people's lives, Almost every one of them has a hallmark scripture. You know, David Hogan, Matthew 10, 7, and 8. I mean, Ken, uh, 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 Ken Hagen, Mark 11, 22, and 24. Almost anybody, right hard bonky for souls, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I mean, you know, just Billy Graham, you know, had you know, verses. I mean, get verses that cause your life to change. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Sam Childers has been in our church several times. He's, you know, but he, I'll be honest with you, now he's mostly in churches, 20, 30,000 people because his budget is so big because he has so many orphanages in Africa and the Sudan. But he was a former hell's angel for real. I mean, he hurt a lot of people. And he got saved. And uh, he's thinking, God, could, any, could God ever use someone like me? And he just got a hold of a verse, I believe it was in Matthew 25, where Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. A verse like that, and, and right after that, he saw on Channel 40, there was uh, this guy named Joseph Coney, and he was kidnapping kids in the night in the Sudan and Africa. And if they didn't adhere to join his army then he would cut off their legs and arms. And he has an orphanage for hundreds of kids like that. And uh, it so stirred his heart. And the verse came, what you do to the least of these, you do to Jesus. And he's, a, he's about as tough as guy you ever meet, really rough. And uh, he was sharing uh, with me, he said, uh, they call him the machine gun preacher, is a book written, I mean, sold a lot, hundreds of thousands of cop movie of him. And uh, he said, you know, he goes in there. And he said, there's a good army and then there's the bad army in that area. But uh, he said, the, the good army said, you know, don't go in this area right now. You're going to get killed. He said, but I know they're kidnapping these kids and they're cutting off their legs. So he got, uh, I mean, it was just an old truck, but it had a machine gun on the top of it. He was, had a, there was a driver. There was uh, 
a guy in the passenger seat, and then two people are on the back of it. And uh, he, he went through the, the, the roadblock. And there was hundreds of men. I mean, they were just destroying kids. See, what it does if these kids agree not to get their, they join the army and they become very ruthless. And uh, so it's a child army, but with adults. And there was hundreds, I mean, there was a lot of things going on that would break your heart. And God said, do this. He said, just drive. And he said, just shoot your guns in the air, the machine guns, and just shoot them in the air. He said, I'll take over from there. Well, they did their little part. And when they shot their guns in the air, it made it sound like an army was coming with like 50 trucks and, and, and thousands. And they left all these kids that they were going to harm. And they, they ran away. And he said two, three orphanages were started. But most of these kids were not harmed. Glory to God. But someone says, wow, that's awesome. And it is. Because he's a real humble guy, just a good guy. But you see, it was the word that got in him. Surely, Jesus loves little kids. And Lord, I'm not, I don't see myself as being able to teach great, preach great, do this, but he's a good teacher, preacher. Will you honor me with your presence and your power if I'm willing to lay my life down for these kids. You know what's amazing? I, honestly, whether it's David Hogan, Hell's Angels, uh, you, know, uh, you know, CM Childers, a bunch of guys, uh, some guys, most of the people I respect most have not graduated from seminary. Nothing wrong with seminary, if it's a good one. Most of the guys that I look up to most as role models are people that, I mean, were not good people but they're humble because they know that they're only worthy through Jesus. And we had Teen Challenge up here. There's a bunch of guys that committed murder. We went to certain prison in Mercer, they, and they couldn't get in. I told them, I said, it's bad when you can't get into prison. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, the minister. And I stay, you know. And, uh, but when these guys worship, I'm going to tell you something. I've never heard worship like these guys. I, I just wept, wept and said, God, I, they, 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 love, they worship you so much more than I do. And I verse came to, to him that's been forgiven much, loves much. And I said, what do I have to do? Do something worse? And the Lord said, no. Just see that all of us have been forgiven much. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. But see, it's the word that changes our lives. Amen? Here's what's exciting. What you meditate on, you will come. When, when you, meditate, you will come to know him. You'll come to see him. And then you will become. Lock him, because what you know and see, the Spirit of God will manifest in you because of Christ in you. Let me just share something. Most, a lot of you and I say the name Michael Jordan, possibly the greatest basketball player ever. When he was first drafted out of North Carolina, he could not hit a, a, a three-point shot, you know, a long shot. He practiced. I mean, he shot a 1,000 shots a day for a year. And as he shot all those, as he practiced, it was, he cultivated the gift in him. I mean, glory, all of us know, and they just say somebody's, you know, uh, good in math, they cultivate the gift. Maybe somebody's good in dance, they cultivate the gift. Amen? Can I tell you something? Here's what's so exciting. If you knew that if you just practiced, amen? I, I, you know, a, a certain gifting that you had that you'd become the greatest violinist in the world, would you practice? If you knew that if you just practiced and exercised your gift in the context of perhaps uh, raising money to help the homeless, would you do it? If you knew that if you exercised the gifting given to you, that it was going to cause you to enter in to elite status, for the kid, would you do it? Sure you do it. My gosh, you know, if I knew that I could play basketball like Michael Jordan or my kids, amen, or my, if I knew my kids could, they would have been out there every day, amen. Now, they don't have that gifting, amen, and I certainly don't. But here's, can I tell you this? The Bible says if you will enter in whoo, and practice the word of God 
and let it come into your heart that you'll become like Jesus. You will come to know Jesus, see Jesus, and become like Jesus. You know what? It is no different. But how many people really do it? Wow. This is the key. It is the key. Wow. I, I want to, I, I'm challenging you and I'm encouraging you. I feel like the Lord is bringing revival. I, I've never sensed the Spirit of God in this church like I have in all the years we've had it. I, I sense revival in, in different areas coming and different churches. I hear the Lord's just saying, will you or won't you enter in fully to being immersed in the Word? Not legalistically. But so you can enter in to what God has for you. Again, if you abide in me, try to do the best you can, living right, and my words abide in you, anything you ask, I will do. Wow. Are you excited? This word will make you a soul winner to where, you know, honest to gosh, it will cause everyone in this place to win souls, I mean, in record amounts. This word will cause you to be intimate with Jesus. This and expect his presence to come. This word will cause you to enter in to be whole. It will cause you, glory to God, to enter into great faith, great love, great wholeness. It will cause you to be the head and not the tail. It will cause you to look an unbeliever in the eye and share the gospel in a way that he will know that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. It will cause you to go to somebody in an incurable situation, a cancer in the fourth stage, and to let them know that there's a healer in the house. And he will do according to who the word says he is. Amen? Amen. It will cause you to enter into such intimacy with Jesus. That the world, like the song, song says, will grow strangely dim. Yeah. And fighting sin will not be your epitaph. I got to fight, fight, fight. Let the wind, wind, wind. No. Come on, man. You see Jesus. Do you really think when the apostles came down from the Mount of Transfiguration that they struggled with unbelief? Do you think they struggled? with? And, and, and you know, Peter didn't look at John and say, man... I know we just had a great time at church, but man, I, you know I'm having a hard time with the bottle. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't think he ever had a hard, you know what I'm saying? I know, but if he did, I don't think he would. I think he'd go down and say, man, what I had a problem with, I don't have a problem with now because I've seen the king. I've heard the voice of God. My God, let's go take, let's go take the world, man. Glory to Jesus. Let's stand up. That's how God's calling us. To live. Someone says you can't do that. God says you can. He said the kingdom of heaven's come. Let's stand up. Amen. Anyone watching my television right now. And you're saying you know what? I've struggled with inability. I've struggled with unfulfilled desire. Right now just say this. Say Father in the name of Jesus. Cause me. To let the word. Change me. Give me faith and to know that what you promised, you will fulfill. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'll, you know, I don't, I don't have, uh, I'm not technologically savvy like most of you guys. So I, I still take my Bible places and don't have the, you know, take the, what is, you know, the, all the pads and stuff. But man, I seriously, I take it everywhere I go. I take it to the barber shop. I, I take it. I take it everywhere I go. Glory to God. Sometimes when I'm shopping, I have it on the top of my cart opened up, and I keep looking at the word. And people, what are you doing? I just said, man, it's just so good. I just can't get away from it. For real, I do that. Someone says you're excessive, you're fanatical, you're out of your mind. Thank you, Amen. Jesus will cause you to be who you never thought you would be. Glory to God. Who will cause you to dance in church when you don't like dancing? Amen? 
He'll cause you to be so bold in sharing the gospel that you can't help but share it when you're shy. Amen. He'll cause you, glory to God, sometimes to be quiet when that's hard for you. Amen? He will cause you to be conformed to His image, to His Word. Amen? Woo, glory to God. Amen. If you, if you have a need, you know, when we're done, you know, come up, need for prayer. I, I had said one name, I believe is the name Corson. Colson, Corson. If that means something to somebody. Glory to God. I, I tell you, I'm, a, I, I'm excited about Jesus. I really am. I'm probably more excited now than I've ever been. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I can't tell you, I'm going to preach on this. I don't want to get hit of myself. I'll tell you what happened. I got a hold of a verse that changed my life. Jewish Meyer was preaching on it. Anybody says, man, God can't use women teachers. I'll tell you, you man, you never read the book of Acts and Priscilla was one of the main teachers in it. But, but I, she was teaching, she shared this verse in Judges 6.34. Woo, man, it says that Gideon was in a time of weakness and inability and the Holy Ghost clothed him with himself Woo! Yeah. took possession of him, yeah. took control of him, Woo. and caused him to enter in to the supernatural to bring deliverance to Israel that have been bound to the Amalekites and the Midianites for almost a hundred years. And I saw the Holy Ghost come to me. And I mean, just, I mean, just take hold of me. Possess me. And I haven't been the same since. Every day I get up and I say, and then God gave me some other verse. I'm going to teach you on this and preach on this. And I said, possess me, Holy Ghost. And all I can tell you, he's doing a lot better than I did. <laughs> Glory to God. Man, I told you, I was praying with somebody in, 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 in other tongues. And, and I started, I didn't know I was speaking in Spanish. I'm speaking in Spanish. And she's a missionary to Spain and got delivered. I'm praying with somebody else and this happened and this. Glory to God. But you know what's happening? Because I got a hold of a verse. Or I should say a verse got a hold of me. Amen? Glory to God. It didn't come by going to fancy seminars, which you're okay. It didn't come. and It came because this word was sent to me. He sent his word and healed them. Amen? Woo! Glory to God. I wake up with that verse. I go to bed with that verse. I eat with that verse. I, oh, I can't get it out of my mind. Woo, it's driving me crazy. Crazy good. Amen? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lose your word to us. Those word, that word, those scripture you have just for us. Just for us. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise. Help us, Father, to appreciate your word, to assimilate your word, to enter into it fully, to appropriate your word. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. Man, there's so much. I tell you, everyone. Man, I just see Jesus. Amen. I see Jesus. Amen. Are you excited?